Walter Donahue. My guest tonight is Minister Louis Farrakhan. Take a look. Fueled by his inflammatory statements and his outrageous remarks, he is one of America's most controversial figures. You are a slave! In 1985, a dressed up Brooks Brothers alligator shoe wearing, diamond ring wearing slave. What is it about Louis Farrakhan? Controversy follows him everywhere. After a 10 country world peace mission, he was busy on Capitol Hill rallying for reparations to collect the unpaid wages for his forebears held as slaves. He says his overall mission is righting the wrongs of the black man. White folk rule us with fear. It is not white people, it's your fear of them that you got to be freed from. He is banned from Israel and not welcome in Great Britain. And his past meetings in Iraq and support of Saddam Hussein has not won him favors in the United States. Hmm. When was that last meeting with Saddam? Oh, a few years ago. Yeah, he didn't see you this time. No, we Where didn't. Where have you gone time. wrong here? <laughs> I mean, you're one of the most famous faces. How many adherents? Islam, the Islamic world, boasts over a billion people? A billion, eight hundred million. I'd see you if I were Saddam. What is it? Did you... Uh, I met with everyone. You met with Tarek Aziz. Tarek and, Aziz would meet me. No, I didn't meet with Tarek Aziz Who'd time. you meet? I met with all of the ministers of his government, including the vice president. You well, have many people that come to America that the don't president meet doesn't the president, say hello? but they meet the vice president, members of Congress, and they call it a successful visit. Yeah. This march didn't do so hot now, Minister Farrakhan. I know you'll be honest enough to acknowledge that. You got nowhere near a million. We got, you know, what? I don't know. Did you get two? Were there 2,000 people there? I don't know the number. It but, may but have you, been two you, or three thousand, was but it? it wasn't the number. Those that tried to organize that march did the best they could with the little money that they had. Mm -hmm. At the last minute, I was asked to, to appear, and I did appear. The idea is more important right. than the numbers that were present, and that idea is beginning to resonate very yeah. strongly in the black community. You speak of reparations about which we'll speak in just a moment. Here's the Vice President of the United States speaking today in Nashville, Tennessee. Mr. Vice President. There is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that he is amassing them to use against our friends, against our allies, and against us. Time is not on our side. Deliverable weapons of mass destruction in the hands of a terror network or a murderous dictator or the two working together constitutes as grave a threat as can be imagined. The risk of inaction are far greater than the risk of action. Not long ago, this was uh, February of this year, you had this to say about uh, President Bush, possible uh, attack on Iraq. Here you are, Minister Farrakhan, February this year. President Bush does intend to go into Iraq. He's made you believe that Saddam Hussein is a terrible man. He's no more terrible than Bush. He's no more terrible than Bush's father. He's no more terrible than Clinton. Because all of them do things in the name of their government that if the truth were made known, there would be a Nuremberg trial for American presidents. Hmm. You proud of that statement? Nuremberg trial? Absolutely. <laughs> I know that what I said is the truth. The trial called The American to... <clears throat> government is a criminal government in dealing with Iraq. Look at the statement of your vice president. He said there is no doubt that there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Why does not he do what the United States government did when they found 
uh, weapons of mass destruction in Cuba. They came before the United Nations. They presented the evidence in a strong case by the vice president saying that there are weapons of mass destruction there, that there is no doubt. Where is the proof? There is no country in the world that agrees with America going to war with Iraq. So who is the real threat? Is it uh, that Saddam is a threat to the world? Or is that you. President Bush and his administration is a threat to world peace? You join significant numbers of Americans in uh, condemning a, an attack on Iraq by the United States, especially if we're going to go alone when it's increasingly looking like that's the case. Why the Nuremberg comment? Why, once again, the Nuremberg trials, one of the most civil attempts to redress a horrible grievance, a moment in 20th century history, um, trying imperfectly as, as it was carried out to bring justice, to bring those who did these horrible things to Jewish people to justice. Sir, you, ra you, you raise his, this. His it's operation. almost like I'm going to get these Jews again. Wham! Right there in the belly. We got them again. You know, you, it's, there's a meanness about this, sir. A meanness that's uh, not Mr. becoming Donahue, a minister. Let me say this. Go ahead. It has nothing to do with Jews. I'm talking about a principle. The trial was set up to rectify evils, injustice in the world, in dealing with the Jewish people. Here you have an international criminal court being set up that will deal with any nation mistreating their people. You talk about America the current, the current. does not wish to be a part of this international criminal court, nor does the Security Council uh, g give America a pass for a year that she can do whatever she wishes to do in peacekeeping efforts and not come before a world court. This is not right. Here's the president of the greatest nation on earth ordering a hit on Saddam Hussein. What makes our president any better than a mob boss or a gang leader or a drug leader that orders hits on people that you don't like? That is not the civilized way to behave, nor is that the way of the president of the greatest nation on earth to yes, behave. Yes. Once again, uh, you're not alone in this position. Um, I don't know, I'm certain you must feel it. You have significant numbers of Americans who support the position that this is not a good idea to go in unilaterally. Brent Scowcroft, mm -hmm. uh, to name one. Uh, General Schwarzkopf, to name two. I mean, what's impressive to you in terms of military credentials? The question is, do you do your brothers and sisters, the members of the African-American community, a service by this kind of mean reference to sending the president before a, a tribunal, someone like Nuremberg, it sounds like you're doing your best to turn off the white folks no, and not, not a, make not a step all. forward. But so what that, I'm trying to show America, that you are not above the law. You say this is a government of laws and not of men. But now America wants to contravene international law and go before the world as an international criminal. I do not think that this is the way that the American people want their leaders to behave. Mm -hmm. And I think she's losing the respect of the nations of the earth yes. by this kind of behavior. Yes. And you sat down with a guy who gassed the Kurds. Oh, sir. You sat down with a man who has knocked off members of his own cabinet, his closest friends. Look, You're not denying I this sit, man wait a minute, wait a minute. is I wanton down, in the listen. area of moral thinking and uh, sir, virtue. I sit down with white people who killed Native Americans, who brought my fathers into slavery for 310 years, who watched our people lynched and did nothing about it. So if I can sit with them... You, you may have sat down with the, four, the, with the I ancestors. I sat down with the, the children of them. But is the American government so innocent? How did crack co uh, cocaine come into the black community? Why is AIDS the number one killer of black people in America as well as in Africa? Is this just an accident? 
We have a government, sir, that needs to be opened up before the American people because I believe there are criminals in this government that have to be brought before the bar of justice. And I'm not saying something as an insane radical, but if America continues in the way that she's going, the whole world will turn against her. And this is not something that I want to see or any decent thinking American wants to see. We are with Minister see. Louis Farrakhan, and we'll be back entertaining your phone calls in just a moment. me, Jewish people of America, since you don't like me, press of America, why have not you been able to stop me from doing what I do? Jews were getting their heads knocked by cops who just didn't want these black folks in the neighborhood. That was communism. And now you're out there making faces, smiling. I see the hurt. I do. I do. Call me a grandstander. Sir, I'm in a man here of you your are. talent you, and power. This is, this is 2002. You bring up something. Now you're going to say, say it's old minute. stuff. Just a minute. Just a minute, sir. You brought up something from 1985. Now, ask me a question. Are there good Jews? Of course there are. Are there Jews that are righteous? Of course there are. Oh, we are so there long Jews? To hear you say Wait that. Are there Jews that have benefited black people? Of course there are. We don't put those righteous persons in a class of those that are not good any more than you put indecent blacks but. in the class of those that are doing good or indecent catholics thank you very much and there seems to be a lot but of that i don't today. call i don't call catholicism a gutter religion either. neither did i call judaism that and i wish that you all would stop bringing up what all i have defended stuff. for 18 years you didn't bring me on here no, to I talk about yesterday let me talk about Phil. 1994 is that yesterday man you need to go back to, well, I do, to your I program not a few people this is a modern I program suggest. let's get modern. all right 1994 modern thank you 1994 Come on up to 2000 and 2000 university of wisconsin to the whites and white jews in the audience i say i'm going to be a rough ride buddy Buckle your seat belts, you're warning them, because I didn't come to pin the tail on the donkey. I come to pin the Excuse tail me. on the honky. Excuse Bring me, me your rabbis and I'll strip your butts naked. See? 1994. And then you come on, Excuse I ask me. you about this, and Excuse you say it's history. Donahue, why did you invite me here to ask me questions about something that somebody else said? I thought you were a much more decent man than yeah, that. You didn't say Why that? don't you deal with the real issues that confront this nation yeah. in 2002? Okay. That's what I'm here for. Right. Not to answer something that I've already answered since 1984. You don't, and I've answered them well on your old shows. Do you want this to be your old show? No. Or I, do you want this to be a new no, show? No, I don't. Then let's come on up to I date don't. then. Okay, well, you don't like my question. No, I don't. But I did mention 1994. That's not ancient history. But the, I did not make those remarks. You are attributing to me something that was made by somebody else. You didn't say I come to pin the tail no, on the sir. honky? No, sir. Bring me That's your not my language. All right. Well, what do you want to talk about, uh, Minister? Well, Frank? now, when you asked me to come here tonight, sir, you asked to talk about my recent peace mission. You asked to talk about Iraq. You asked to talk about reparations. You asked to talk about Zimbabwe. None of that has been mentioned tonight. Well, we're just so getting... I'm asking right. you, sir, what did you ask me here we're for? We're getting started here. I, Thank you. I do ask you to... I think that a man of your faith and talent and intellect cannot get out from under the curiosity on the part of the press, not only the white press, but the black press as well, to call you on some of these inflammatory things that you say. And you're spending half your life explaining to reporters that you didn't mean that, you meant something else, it wasn't this, you're misquoted. 
how can a man who has so much influence spend half, why would you have to spend so much time explaining yourself? <laughs> Especially a man of your verbal skills. Sir. Uh, it, yeah, even it, I understand it when you say yeah, but things like this. Donahue, I mean, what, this is your show. You are the one raising the old questions that I've already old answered questions. over 20 years. Now, sir, if, I, if, you, if that's the way you want to conduct yourself, that's your business. But I think the American people deserve something better from you as well as from me. That's now, this is okay. 2002, and America is facing some very real and critical problems and decisions that have to be made. I think we need to talk about those things, Mr. Donahue. And we will and when we... I feel more comfortable when being I want with you. you to be comfortable. You're in my studio. I want you to be comfortable. we got a lot to talk about, and we'll do it when we come back in just a moment. Uh, we're with uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan. Um, let's talk about uh, Israelis and the Palestinians. Here's, uh, here's one of the points you made. Let me show our viewers here. Minister Farrakhan on the hopelessness of the Palestinians. Right here. You know, beloved brothers and sisters, that hopelessness is the mother of violence. It is the mother of suicide. It is the mother of self-destruction. Hmm. That's also 1984 now. Okay, you're not going to be upset with me for going back there. That's the wisdom of so many people today. Suicide bombing is the result of hopelessness. You believe that in 84 and you believe that today. That is correct. And uh, you also believe that uh, Israel has a more prominent seat at the table of discussions here in this country and that our favoring Israel has uh, not promoted the peace in that area. You, wanted, you would want to add what to that? I think that the United States of America has a great opportunity to win the hearts of the Arab and Muslim world, not by favoring Israel, but by being an honest broker in the process for peace. I was in the Middle East when President Bush made his now famous peace initiative where he called for the removal of uh, Yasser Arafat as the leader and set down several conditions which would be the predicate for the United States working to see the Palestinians with an independent state. Most of the people in that part of the world rejected that idea of America, the, uh, the greatest exponent of democracy, literally trying to coerce the Palestinian people on the basis of their desire to get rid of an elected leader and that they would not deal with, any, uh, with him if he were re-elected. And for that reason, you feel that... Uh it would be possible for us to have peace in the Middle East um, if we brought our own power to bear and our own influence to both sides. I'll give you a chance to expand on that when we come back in just a moment. This is in all of Islam. He is Minister Louis Farrakhan. Ever want to talk to him? Here's your chance. Minister Farrakhan returns answering your phone calls as soon as we catch up on the news from MSNBC. Natalie Morales, here's what's happening. Who in here do we want to stay? And who in here do we want to go? Yes, sir. And we want to show them that never again will they ever disrespect the black community. We must make them afraid. That's right. To do evil to us and think they can get away with it. You fill Yankee Stadium. I never was in Yankee Stadium. I thought you appeared in Yankee Stadium in 
No, sir. Well, no. which stadium? Wheat about field. which stadium am I confused? You certainly brought Randall, uh, Randall's Island. But in, in other cities, there's well, thousands and thousands of people. Yes. Come to hear you speak. And I think I understand why. You speak to their anger. And, who, and, you know, it's not possible to argue against the anger. Let's look at just a couple of things. Unemployment rate. This is July of this year. Whites, 5.3%. Hispanics, 76 Almost 10%. 10% of black folks. And these numbers, you know, we all know there's a lot more than that. Unemployed. How about the jails? Two million people in jail for every 100,000 people in, pri in prison. 3,500 are black. 1,100 Hispanic, and 462 are white. When I hear you speak to these injustices, to these, you know, racial profiling, New Jersey State Troopers, when I, honestly, I think if I were a black male, I'd be at Randall's Island listening to you speak. I would. And you're... You know, the political power that you have is undeniable. But you make it tough on the white reporters. I mean, how, you know, it's with all this history of this kind of rhetoric, it's awful tough to say, hey, Minister Farrakhan, sit down and tell us how horrible we are. We have to challenge you as you would challenge us. This isn't a game. This is a matter of the respect that we want to have as professionals you can't get up there and talk like that as a man of god using language like you do so i'm asking for some understanding here you bring this on yourself <laughs> sir if i took the new testament and took jesus the greatest human being in the eyes of christians that ever lived I could take Jesus with the scriptures and give him a sound bite and make him look anti-Semitic because there's a statement that Jesus made in St. John 8 and 44 where he condemns Jews. If you pull that out, put that up on the screen, tonight they'd be saying Jesus anti-Semite. When Jesus beat the people in the temple, all we need is a 30-second bite on Donahue or CBS or CNN, and they'd say, look at that enraged maniac, how he beat those people out of the temple. You could accuse Jesus of teaching hate, for Jesus said in the gospel, you, you, you can't be my disciple unless you hate your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, yea, even your own life for my sake. Take that out of context. Jesus is a hate teacher. Another thing, take Jesus out of context. He's a man of peace. Wow. But he said, think not that I come to bring peace, nay, a sword. So if this media were listening to Jesus, like you all listen to me, to snatch things out yeah. of context, to deliberately make me enough. look other no, than no. what I really am. Oh. That is my argument with the press, All and right. that's my argument with you tonight. Right. In fact, I'm really surprised at you because I thought Donahue, a great man. I really, we missed you when you well, got your hiatus. Well, thank you, Mr. But coming Sarah. back, this country needs uh, people yes. that will bring out of those who are talking the real issues behind their words. That's the kind of man you are, and that's the kind of man I want you to be so that your program won't diminish over time, but will grow. You, uh, let's talk about reparations. Here you are, uh, it's, it's a, a speech at the Apollo Theater. Here you are, uh, speaking of reparations, roll the tape. Who built this country? The Million Man uh, March. No, that was last. Oh, this week. is the reparations. Uh, this is the reparations rally a week ago Sunday. Sorry, and I want to give you a chance to. We've already established that this was a very, very discouraging turnout. Doesn't mean there's something wrong with you, but it certainly means that the excitement and the energy that we knew. Uh, at, for example, the Million Man March, 
was not there at all. But we were no part tell us what of the organization okay. of this march. But we are definitely a part of the idea that the damage that was done to black people has to have a, a hearing and reparations. If the Japanese Americans could get reparations for their suffering, and even the Italians and the German Americans during World War II suffered injustice, and the Chinese Americans as the rise of Mao Zedong and communism in that part of the world suffered injustice in the hands of the government of the United States of America. All the while that was going on, black people have suffered in this country. And the sad part about it, uh, Mr. Donahue, is that our government would not send a high-level representative to Durban, South Africa, to talk on racism and the effect of the international uh, at tra transatlantic slave trade. Here's 400,000 black men and women in the armed forces of America that President Bush is willing to send to Iraq, but the president nor his administration have apologized for slavery, nor will they speak forthrightly against racial profiling. I don't think we have a fight in Iraq. I think our fight is to make America a better nation for all of us to live in. And I don't think that the war, beating the war drum for Iraq, is going to solve the problems that create the crisis of confidence in the American electorate. Uh, Nicole from Florida, are you there? Yes. You wanted to ask Minister Farrakhan. Minister Farrakhan, why is it that you feel descendants of former slave owners need to pay for their forefathers' crimes when they have not committed crimes themselves? You know, um, thank you for the question. I watched the trial of O.J. Simpson, and uh, he won in the criminal court, and they found him not guilty, but they tried him again, and they found him responsible. The present generation of whites is absolutely not guilty of what was done by generations of whites hundreds of years ago. But I think the present generation of whites have to accept the responsibility to right the wrong, because the wrong that was done 400 years ago, is the, the effect of it is still seen in the black community today. Who will accept the responsibility, live up to the challenge, and make America a better America, not just for whites, but for blacks and Native Americans, Hispanics, and poor people. That is the responsibility of the present generation of whites. And I would hope that if you accept this responsibility, that the, the, the guilt of what happened by the fathers the sins of that, that will not be passed on to the children. And we'll be back in just a moment. Tomorrow, I take on the titans of the religious right, the Reverend Jerry Falwell and former presidential candidate Gary Bauer. Later this week, today's show weather guy, Al Roker. If the man is telling the truth about what he said, whether it is critical of you critical of me, critical of our people, critical of a government, critical of America, critical of Jews, critical of Christians, critical of Muslims. I have the right to say what I believe, and you have the right to record what I say as I say it, and don't mix it up. I agree with all of that. You have a right to say what you believe, as you have. Incidentally, regarding reparations, present-day black folks would, would, have to, would make their contribution to these reparations through their taxes. So black folks' tax money would be going to pay black folks reparations. And it's one not. of the criticisms of this mm -hmm. reparations idea is that you can't separate black and white taxes. It's impossible. Yeah, well, you ask... Uh, the Japanese Americans who pay taxes. For the Japanese brothers, you mean? How uh, are their reparations going to be paid? You ask the Jews who suffered in Germany, 
how are their reparations paid because I believe they pay taxes as well we're not just talking about money because there's an old saying that a fool and his money will soon part uh, the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge there has to be a transfer of knowledge that would allow the black man and woman of America to heal from the condition imposed by 300 years of chattel slavery and 140 years of living under injustice. That has to be repaired. Not just money, but a transfer of knowledge. We need to talk about land. We need to talk about how we're going to build a future for our people. You just mentioned prison statistics and the injustice of it. You know, 20 years ago, Phil, when the business community began to move out of the inner cities because they felt that the inner cities would explode in racial unrest, when those businesses moved out and moved into foreign countries to give those jobs to a cheap labor market, many blacks and Hispanics in the inner cities lost their jobs, went on welfare, or began selling drugs or involving themselves in criminal enterprise or joining the armed forces of the United States so that they could make a living to feed their families. This is why there's such an imbalance in the prison population because job opportunities are not there and we have not been sufficiently taught how to use our knowledge to do something constructive for ourselves and that's the value of the teachings of the honorable elijah muhammad sharon in california sharon yes go right ahead i love you minister farrakhan thank my, you my question to you is in the nation of Islam, are you endorsing the registration of mixed couples, for instance, African-American brothers with uh, Caucasian women and vice versa? Thank you. We have never approved of interracial marriage. We feel that the black woman is a suffering woman with very few men to link herself to. So we don't want to see our black men necessarily marrying white women or white men marrying black women. However, we cannot legislate love. When people fall in love, what can you do about that? But the rule is that whites generally marry whites, Chinese generally marry Chinese, Indians generally marry Indians, and blacks generally marry our own. But if there's a couple that are in love with each other and marry, we do not try to separate mm -hmm. them. Your marriage is how old? How long has your marriage uh, uh, this in a vital way proceeded? 49 years. Next year will be 50 years. Uh -huh. You have nine children. Nine children and about 40 grandchildren and nine great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And uh, how's your health? My health is good, as you Grandpa's can see. Grandpa's health is good? Grandpa's health is good. You had serious bout with uh, prostate cancer. That's correct. And you went to the cobalt, and uh, you had that new treatment, and it works for you, does it? I, I think it's a form of treatment that I would recommend if the cancer has not gone too far. Seed implantation. I think Mayor Giuliani had that uh, treatment, and he seems to be doing quite well. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are in uh, Secaucus, New Jersey, um, talking with uh, Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam. Kim from California, you're there? Yes. You wanted you, to say. Um, you've been accused of accepting financial assistance from Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Can you please explain your relationship with Gaddafi and these financial allegations? They're not allegations, they're truth. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi loaned the Nation of Islam five million dollars for an economic development plan and uh, I have a very good relationship with Muammar Gaddafi we are friends we are brothers and uh, he has great respect for me and I for him in fact I have great love and admiration for him 
and I'm very grateful to Almighty God for his snatching the idea of a United States of Africa from uh, Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah and Gamel Abdel Nasser, which resulted just recently in the formation of the African Union. And we'll be back in just a moment. Want to see on Donahue? Log on to donahue.msnbc.com and pitch your ideas. Plus, you can chat along with the show live every night. Speak out and let us know what you think. Phil's on the web now at donahue.msnbc.com. I'm thinking of uh, the loved ones of Pan Am 103 who are watching you embrace... Uh, Gaddafi, I mean, you, you don't think he's responsible for that? I mean, you no, couldn't. No, you wouldn't embrace him if you thought he was. No, I, I don't believe he's responsible for that. But um, the United States shot down an Iranian jet with uh, nearly 300 persons on that. There's been a lot of terrible tragedy in this world. Right. And now we're living at a time when we have to atone for the things that we've done that are ill and wrong mm -hmm. so that we can make a better world for ourselves and our children yeah. to live in. Yeah. And I'm that's what your... I hope. I do too. I do too. That's what makes your pattern of rhetoric and accusations that you're being taken out of contest so hard to deal with when we think of what a healer you could be. What a healer. Michael what, from Florida. <laughs> what a healer I am. <laughs> Michael, Hi. go yeah, ahead. My question is for Mr. Farrakhan. Yes. Um, my question is, why does he feel that he is such a good American and talks about portraying good Americans when he has such close ties to foreign evils that are against us? Close ties, I assume. Thank you. Go ahead. You know, a good American, I'm sure, are those that love their country and wave the flag. But to me, the best Americans are those who fight for those principles upon which the United States was founded. Martin Luther King Jr. at one time was looked upon as a divisive force in this country. But Martin Luther King said he was a drum major for justice. And it is only justice that will make America have the perpetuity that America should have. And so it is voices like mine, unafraid to speak truth to power. And I say this to, Amer to the American people. You need to rise today and let the president know that unless he makes the case for war, America should never be the aggressor and attack a nation that cannot really defend itself against the power of the greatest military power in the history of the world. That's what makes me a good American. I use freedom of speech responsibly to correct a government that I feel has gone wrong. All of you should speak up. If not, I'll be glad to speak for you. You've gotten uh, the Nation of Islam has received high marks for the young men who accompany you. Boy, they just look military, bearing clear of eye, drug free, each and every one. Wonderful message. You've cleaned out uh, public housing projects and protected young children from the evils of drugs and. Um, do you get any federal money helping you do this? <laughs> we did at one time, but we're under sanctions now <laughs> because they say we're anti-Semitic. I can Just... say on this program, Phil, I have never been, nor am I now, a hater of the Jewish people. What I dislike is injustice. And when I speak to that, and speak critically of those Jewish persons who I feel are unjust to us, I feel it's criminal to call me anti-Semitic. Well, that I am not. Yeah, I don't know. You don't, bring up, you don't bring up the Christians as much as you bring up the Jews. Incidentally, regarding uh, 
I don't see, my president has already said, I don't see how we can allow public dollars to fund programs where spite and hate is the core of the message. That's what I'm trying to say. You don't need all this spite and hate. And let me accept your word that it's not true. Well, you're giving the appearance that it's true. Louis Farrakhan preaches hate. Louis Farrakhan is a hateful person who has preached an anti-Semitic message, which is ugly. George I W. Bush is preaching hate every time he stands on the television telling us that Saddam Hussein is a threat. Saddam Hussein didn't cause Enron and we're Dot com. He didn't call the crisis of, of confidence. He's not responsible for police brutality and mob attacks and hate crimes in America. No, Mr. President, you are preaching hate and you need to stop it.